Show. Uh, it's like four in the morning. How did I oversleep? I don't know. Oh, you gotta go though. Let's go. Ooh. All right. Luckily, it's two steps away. Wait, let me make my bed. There we go. That All right. great. All, All right. right. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome back to the Dalton and Nick Show. Glad to see you here, Dalton. Yeah, man, let me tell you, I'm glad to be here, and I just want to apologize to you guys. Um, it was so tempting this morning, and I unfortunately fell into that temptation this morning by cutting my arm off and staying in bed for longer than I should have. So, Well, we forgive you, Dalton, and uh, I wanted to ask you, what are we talking about today? Well, let me tell you, today we're actually talking about temptation. That's kind of convenient. It's, yeah, it's kind of convenient, isn't it? Yeah. But in a lot of situations that we face... We face all kind of temptations. You know, even if it's walking through the grocery store, or if it's going walking down the hallways in school, anything that we do, we face a lot of temptations. But in fact, Jesus even dealt with temptation, but wow. he dealt with it with sin. Mm -hmm. And so the difference is, sometimes we choose to disobey God. Jesus never did that. Wow. And so today what I want to do is I want to tell you about this story and really dive into it. So Jesus faced temptation because he was one fully man, and two, fully God. So, why did Jesus become human? Well, I don't know. I've always wondered that question. But do you know? Jesus became human to obey his Father's mm. plan and to rescue all sinners. That's because good. the fair payment for sin is death. Mm. So, the only way for sinners to be saved is through the death of a perfect sacrifice. Wow. And who is that perfect sacrifice? Jesus. Jesus. But, because he never sinned. Right. Which is really, really good. And Jesus was born as a human. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And then what? He grew up. He grew up. That's exactly right. And last week we learned uh, that Jesus obeyed God by being baptized. And so just to recap, just for a minute, baptism is a picture of death and the resurrection of Jesus. And those who believe in him are baptized to show the world that they belong with Jesus. That's great. Right. So now we're going to tell you guys a Bible story. So it's a, it's a short story, but it is a story nonetheless. And it's going to be in Matthew 4. So Matthew 4, 2 says, For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted, Jesus fasted, and became very hungry. Mm -hmm. So this basically is saying that God sent Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted, and as a, really as a test for him. Mm -hmm. So here's a tricky question. Why would it have been a sin for Jesus to make bread? What? So usually it's not a sin for, to make bread, but the devil wanted Jesus to stop obeying God. So Jesus was in the wilderness without food because God, God and the Holy Spirit wanted to test Jesus. And it, would, it was in Jesus' power to make bread, but he chose not to because he didn't want to disobey God. Wow. Each time that Jesus obeyed God, he used a Bible passage. Like, I don't know about me or about you, but like, when I think of that. That's, that'd be hard for me to do, like, just come up with it, you know, on the fly. But mm -hmm. he did that to resist the devil's tricks and his temptations that he's putting on the Lord. But did you notice what the devil did the second time after reading all of Matthew chapter 4? He tried to trick him with the Bible. Yeah, he tried to twist scripture to say that something was sinful when it was really not sinful. But thankfully, Jesus is more powerful than all forces of evil. God's plans never fail. And I think that's so cool. And Jesus saw the right, even through the devil's lies. So how many times did Jesus resist Satan's attempts to make him sin? A lot. How many? Three? Three. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to say something that I'm going to say quite a lot today. Mm -hmm. And it is a, it's a, a really cool quote. I think it's really interesting for our time here together. 
is Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. Never. Never. He In 33 perfect. years? 33 years he remained perfect. Just like he had always been and always will be. So everyone who trusts in Jesus is a new creation. So God forgives all sin when we trust in him and choose to get saved. And the, sh the picture of that is being baptized like Jesus was. Mm. So God also hold, sends the, the Holy Spirit to live in us and fill us up with his power. Mm. We will still be tempted. So being saved isn't a fix-all for Christians. Mm. We'll still be tempted, right. but we can look to God and the Holy Spirit for us to not sin. That's right. And the devil, we've already said this, but I just want to reiterate it. The, the devil tried to get Jesus to sin. He tried multiple, multiple times. Yeah. But Jesus never did. Wow. Jesus always did the right thing. Jesus died on the cross to rescue us from our sin, which we learned that last week about mm -hmm. baptism. But when we are tempted to sin, we can talk to Jesus. We can talk to Jesus and lay it all out for him, and he's going to help us through. So now we're going to go into our key passage. But first, we're going to do our science experiment that me and Dalton did a little experiment. while ago. And it was, it was crazy. It's it, so much fun. Yeah. It's going to be messy, so we'll see you outside in just a minute. Guys, I'm going to prank Nick. Let's drop this Mento down in this Diet Coke. <gasps> Dalton's Diet Coke! Oh, I don't like you right now, don't Why not? That was, that was mean. No? I just wanted to sip a Diet Coke. Oh, well, you should have went and got another one, huh? I got you, though. All right, well, yeah. you did get me. I did. I'm going to have to get you back. All right, well, let's see what we can do. Welcome back to Science Experiments with Dalton and Nick. This is Diet Soda and Mentos. I got you back. Oh, yeah. Guys, what's up? We're uh, having a really awesome time outside today. What we're going to do is we're going to take one Mento, we're going to drop it in a bottle of Diet Soda. So, you can take as many Mentos as you like. Um, we're just going to start with one, or do you want to start with two? One or two. Yeah. Let's, let's go two. Let's go bigger. go home. Right? Go bigger. go home. All right, bigger. go home. So, two Mentos, Diet Soda. Here we go. That was cool, Dalton. That was Look awesome. That. that was pretty cool. It just keeps on going and going and going. That's cool. Oh, yeah. It's like a volcano. Yeah, that's... Yep. So, guys, the second experiment that we have is you can drop a Mento down in the diet soda and then put the cap on before it explodes. It's a really trying task. So, let's see if we can do it. No! Go, 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 go. 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 All right, go. Oh, crap. Come at me. Oh, Now, that was that took us four tries. It four was really difficult. tries. But we did it. Now, if, doing this experiment, you are going to get wet. I yes. promise. Hey, it dude. is. Yeah, keep going. Sorry. Once you throw them, watch out because you might get hit with it. Yeah. And that that is very scary. Yes. Um, just be careful. Exercise yeah. caution. Yeah. Use your and parents. And have fun. Yeah. Make sure to use your parents. That's right. Have fun. Now back to the desk with Dalton and Nick. That was a cool science experiment, Dalton. Man, wasn't it? let me tell you, it was. It, it was, was a sticky, sticky mess. And very hot. Yeah. And so we want you to try that at home. Um, your only parents, with your parents' permission. Yes, only with your parents' permission. And so get a trash bag, get some old newspapers, lay it out on the ground. Yeah. And have fun. Yes. So our key passage this week is the same one as last week, but it still really has home. That's right. And that is John 3.30. Do you remember what it says, Dalton? It says that... He must increase where I must decrease. That's great. I'm, I'm glad you remembered that. That's right. Because um, if you guys memorize that verse mm. and have your parents take a video of you saying it and put it in the comments, there will be some requirements below in the caption. But if you post that video, you might be featured in our episode next week. 
And who wouldn't want to be a part of that? I think it'd be so much fun. So we talked about this key passage a lot last week. Mm. We really dove, dove into it. So I'm just going to summarize it. So John the Baptist wanted his life to glorify God. Mm -hmm. So he taught people about Jesus and was speaking on it until Jesus was ready to start teaching other people about it. And at that point, John the Baptist decreased so Jesus could increase. And by doing that, he gave Jesus a spotlight and really glorified God. Wow, that's, that's awesome. But let me tell you, I have a favorite quote. I've already said it one time today. I might say it one or two more times, but I want to say it right now. Is Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. Wow. Which I, I still think that's so amazing. And so when we are tempted, we need to ask Jesus for the help to obey him. And that's just an awesome way to glorify him. So I wanted to ask you a question, Dalton. Yeah, what you got? Why, why was Jesus in the wilderness? Well, the Spirit sent him there to pray and to fast. And he was tempted by Satan while he was in the wilderness. Wow. Three different times we want to learn that. And, but that comes from Matthew 4, verse 1 and 2. Well, huh. so okay. Jesus... Um, was tempted by Satan mm. to do three different things while he was in the wilderness. Mm. So the first one was turn stones into bread. And basically he could have done this to get out of hunger because mm. he can do miracles. Mm. And the second one was to jump off the worship temp temple. It's mm. a difficult word. Um, yeah. So this was obviously a sin because that was their place of worship back then. And then the last one was to worship Satan to get riches and power. Mm. So this was obviously sin because you don't want to worship Satan. You want to worship God. That's right. So I have a question for you, Don. Yeah, what's How that? did Jesus fight against this temptation? Well, we, we learned that actually earlier in our lesson. And it talks about that Jesus quoted scripture to remember what is true. And that comes from Matthew 4, verses 4, 7, and 10. Wow. So we face temptation. <clears throat> we all face it. Whether it's in the hallway at school to hit somebody or in the grocery store to buy a chocolate cake, which... I give in to that temptation at the grocery store. Mm. So Satan wants people to sin. And um, Satan wants to prevent us as Christians mm. from glorifying God's mm. plan for us. So um, Satan tempts us, obviously, by telling us, you should grab that chocolate cake mm. or you should disobey your parents. And that hurts God, obviously. Really so I've got a question for you. Yeah. Can we as Christians resist temptation? Well, I really think there's two different kinds of people in the world. One, one kind is people that, who trust in Jesus mm -hmm. and another kind of people that don't trust in Jesus. But we need to realize without Jesus, we, can, we cannot avoid sin. And so through him and through everyone that trusts in him, has the Holy Spirit living inside of us, which I think is so awesome. Christians can see the power of the Spirit and the Word of God to fight temptation and to obey God. Wow. Yeah, that is awesome. But the last thing I want to ask you, Nick, is why is it important to resist that temptation? Well, it's really important, and I've said this already, it's really important to glorify God and by resisting the temptation to not do something or to do something that would hurt and make God sad. Mm. So like when you don't unload the dishwasher at your house, does it make your parents sad? Or who does it make sad? Mm. It makes your parents sad and it makes God sad. So mm. that is a sin by disobeying your parents. That's right. But and it's what? the same way for disobeying God. You're right. That's what, that's what I was going to say. But also I want to follow up with my favorite quote. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Are you sure? I am. So you want to you wanna help me with it? Jesus was Jesus tempted. Jesus was tempted. But, but never, never sinned. sinned. Wow. Wow. When we face temptation, we can resist it through the Holy Spirit's power and the Word of God. So now we're going to take a little break, and we're going to go to craft time with Miss Cindy, my mom, and she's going to show us some awesome crafts That's today. Good. I can't wait. Hey, guys. It's Palm Sunday, and I'm Cindy, and I'm going to do craft time with you. So today, what we're going to do is just a simple Easter bunny out of toilet paper rolls. I know everybody has toilet paper rolls around their house. So we're gonna do a bunny and then also some Easter eggs out of toilet paper rolls. All right, so here's the supply list of what might be helpful to have when you are doing your project. All right, now that you've gathered your supplies, um, you're gonna put the three toilet paper tubes together. And I did that with a, a hot glue gun, 
Um, you could either use a glue gun or you could probably use tape or um, I don't know that staples would work really well, but hot glue probably is the best. So if you have that, you're just gonna t glue along the edges here so that the rabbit takes shape for a face and then the ears. And once you've gotten that done and let it dry, you are going to grab some paint. It can just be acrylic paint and the paint of your choice. You can put a little bit onto a paper plate and from that, you can choose to do it several different ways. You can either take the paintbrush and paint it directly on to the toilet paper tube, like this all getting all of the edges, or if you wanted to just be a little bit more um, carefree with it, you could just take the whole structure and put it straight into the paint, kind of dab it around a little bit, and then you're gonna take it and just put it right onto your paper. Again, using cardstock or construction paper is probably best. Look at that, how cute. So there's your little rabbit and you're obviously gonna need to let it dry just a little bit. You can use other colors, um, obviously paint, pastel colors are kind of fun for Easter. Um, I did this one here a little bit earlier and there's the little rabbit and I put a, a face on there and then I also put my prayer partner's name on the back and I'm just gonna send that in the mail um, to my prayer partner. So if you wanna make more of like a postcard size or you wanna do more of a, um, a card, you could do it like this and maybe give it to your neighbor. Happy Easter with a bunny and you could draw another picture inside. Or if you don't have a glue gun and the paper towel or the toilet paper rolls, you could just use one toilet paper roll and um, make an egg. Um, another way you can do it if you don't have paint is you could take just a, like a Sharpie marker or even probably a um, Crayola marker and rub the edge of the toilet paper tube. And I guess you could use a paper towel tube as well. And just kind of give it a little color on there Let's see how this turns out. Get all the edges there. And then you could just turn it over onto your paper. Now it's not quite as dark as the rabbit, but you get the idea. And I did that on this one. There's some eggs there, and then you can decorate them however you want to. So just something kind of simple and fun. I know uh, kids are getting a little squirrely with how long we've been quarantined, but little rabbits. Um, again, you can make a card, something fun for Easter. And yeah, I think that's it. So now back to the Dalton and Nick show. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I had a good time making our bunny out of toilet paper tubes. Um, hey, if you would do me a favor, I wanna see what yours looks like. So if you can um, have your mom or dad take a picture of your um, your card or your bunny, your, your eggs, have them take a picture and put it in the comments below so that we can see the craft that you made. And thanks for joining me today. Now back to Dalton and Nick. So welcome back. That was an awesome craft, wasn't it? That was so much fun. I'm going to go home and try that. Can I um, come over and do it again? You can. Oh, awesome. All right. So now I'm going to give you guys a little bit of the summary about what we talked about today. So first we talked about Jesus being in the wilderness and resisting temptation from Satan. It looks like we're in the wilderness right now. It does. It's, it's, wow. Kind of like we're in the woods. I know. So Jesus so cool. resisted the temptation of in the wilderness of turning stones into bread, jumping off the temple, and worshiping Satan to get riches and power. So um, we talked about that. We talked about John 3.30, which if you guys memorize and take a video of it mm. and post it, we'll put you in our next episode. Right. And that's that's really it. That yeah, It really hit home today. And we, we did an awesome science experiment and awesome craft. But guys, we want to close our show today with a really cool opportunity. So this past week, we posted a video that you could be a part of our show. 
And so what we need you to do is we need you to pray and video, get your parents to video it and send it to us. And so we had one special person do that for us today. Wow, that was great. And so they're going to close in prayer, and um, we'll be back in just a second. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all of my friends and, um, and uh, Mr. Dot and, and, and all the people who are at church. And I hope, and we are praying for the doctors and nurses and their patients so they can be safe and, um, and I know that there's a coronavirus but we don't know what uh, we would do with the coronavirus and, uh, and we wouldn't see anything for, for nothing and, and that's how God made us Thank you so much for praying for us today. And that was really great. And we really want you guys involved in our show. That's right. So thank you for praying for us. And we'll see you next week on the Dalton Mix Show.